What's up everyone, Denver here, bringing you another game review video. And I couldn't even begin to explain how excited I was for this game, uh, because Until Dawn is my favorite game of this console, this generation, and Supermassive Games uh, made Man of Medan, and I couldn't wait to dive in, so here is my review of it. Does it live up to Until Dawn? Let's find out now. You start off post-World War II, and you learn the basic mechanics during this prologue episode. You learn how to fight, and how to duck, and all these other things. And again, this is a spoiler-free review, so no worries on that. You feel free to watch this in its entirety. All the scenes are from the very beginning of the game. You do get to experience what happens on the ship firsthand before jumping into present day. Uh, I will say that the sound, the voice, the graphics, to me, are simply amazing in every way, just like Until Dawn. The camera can be a little frustrating as you try and, and go in places. Sometimes you really, or pick up an object for that matter, you really got to fight with the camera to get it to do exactly what you want it to do. Uh, and as you see it says L1 to walk faster. Well, this is it. This is as fast as you can go in the game. This is the walk, fast walk. So it's kind of like tank so, controls uh, a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Are you getting a real strange feeling right now? Do I look like a guy who likes to talk about his feelings? <laughs> you look like a mess on wheels, Chuck. I ain't the only one. And the dialogue is kind of lame at times. Uh, definitely could have been a little bit of better dialogue too. But it's it's passable, especially for a, a B-rated horror film the story you choose to tell. You see, this tale is only part written, and the choices you make will complete it and determine whether the lives of those with whom you are interfering continue to flourish or whether they are snuffed out. You see, so, so you have the curator after every chapter. There's like three context. chapters. He'll appear and, and tell you how you're doing, and whether people are died or not, and stuff like but you that. Shouldn't fear death. It is, after he is all well acted, I think. It is the tax he can ask, you can ask for hints if you want from him, but they're really not necessary. Then you to jump everybody. to present time, and you control five casts of characters, and you can actually play this online with a friend doing things simultaneously, or you can play couch co-op with up to five people, each person controlling one of the characters, which is really cool as well. I do it mostly solo, just like Until Dawn, but these other additions are very welcome, and it definitely adds to the experience. So you end up at the, this uh, abandoned ship that you experienced when the game first started. And this is where the remainder of the game uh, will take place on. Reminds me of that old movie from Dark Castle Entertainment, uh, Ghost Ship. Similar to that. Everyone's still alive. Things could have been quite different. Why, thank you. So the rest of the game, again, is, is uh, spoiler-free here, is just you trying to get off this the ghost ship that you're on while trying to avoid the captors that brought you here. Uh, so, my main th problem with the story, anyhow, is that it was extremely predictable. I mean, I loved it still. It's still a great story, and I love the characters, but yeah, it's an extremely predictable story. You'll have it figured out in in the uh, first few minutes, but still a great story nonetheless. But just keep in mind that there's not going to be too many surprises if you've seen a single solitary horror movie. So in closing, uh, some things to keep in mind is the game is rather short. It is only about... Well, if you really take your time, maybe five hours, but other than that, you can finish it in three or four hours. And uh, Until Dawn was much lar longer, but also it was also twice as expensive, where this is a budget price of $30. Oh, good God. Why do I need to see this now? Also, uh, 
There's a lot of replayability to this. If you want to get the platinum trophy, which I'm a trophy hunter, you have to replay the game quite a few times. Uh, so the short length will actually make it better, if that's the case, if you really want the platinum the short length will make it not what such a not such Are a chore. Here. Now there is a theatrical cut you can play and a curator's cut, which allows you to play from people you didn't play through the first time, different characters and different scenarios. And every time you play, it can be different if you make different choices. It really does mix it up a little bit, and I really really appreciate that. And I absolutely love the setting of a ghost ship. I love ships. I love ghost ship stories and. I just am very, very pleased with this game overall. Supermassive Games has indeed done it again. Now, this is an anthology. This is only the first of um, many uh, games coming out. And I'm really, really super excited and happy. They give you a, a teaser of the next one coming out, the end of this game, and I'm super excited for that as well. And I just really hope that you guys would give this game a chance. Because Supermassive Games really just does things differently. Now, if you guys don't like, like, being in a movie, per se, and not having total control and a ton of, ton of action other than quick time events, then you, this may not be your cup of tea. But I am telling you that I would give this game a chance. And my final rating for this game is going to be an 8.5 out of 10. That's it for this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, you can give it a thumbs down. And uh, also check out my 300-plus videos of right. Dead by Daylight, as this channel is mainly dedicated to Dead by Daylight. Uh, if you really like that game, I suggest that you check out my videos. I think you'll enjoy them. And until then, we will see you all on the next video. Don't let that happen.